Hello from the National Farm Machinery Show. I'm here with FMC and I've got David Wheeler with me. David, what do you do for F FMC? I'm the director for technical services here in the U.S. Well, we want to talk about things like uh, the, the R&D that you guys are doing. Uh, how have those abilities grown since you've had the uh, DuPont acquisition? And maybe mention some of what's new in the pipeline from FMC. Okay. Well, when we made the acquisition of the DuPont R&D assets, we more than doubled the active ingredients that were in our development pipeline. And of course, we added a discovery injury. Before uh, the DuPont acquisition, FMC was primarily an open innovation company, meaning we licensed technologies uh, from other companies. Uh, and we had done that for about 15 years. Um, the opportunity came available to purchase the DuPont R&D engine and get back into discovery because, you know, now with some of the issues that we have uh, with resistance in, in really across all of our pest uh, disciplines, uh, the need for new chemistry, new modes of action uh, is, is greater than ever. Uh, without a discovery engine, you didn't have the opportunity to create those, and, and this gives us that opportunity. Um, short term in the pipeline, most of our technology coming forth in the next couple of years will be around fungicide technology, and we're introducing a new product, Lucento, this year. Um, we've got another new uh, SDHI fungicide that we'll be introducing next year. Um, and then after that, we get into our herbicide technology. We've got two new modes of action. Uh, that we'll be bringing forth. They just came out of discovery this year into development. Uh, and so there'll be a five to seven year process on those uh, to bring them to the market. But that's so exciting to us because we know what challenges we face. And um, with more and more resistance building out there in the weed management world, uh, we really have to have new technology, uh, new modes of action in order for growers to move forward in, in uh, particularly in our corn and soybean crops. Uh, we just learned of a new um, uh, species resistance to group 15 modes of action. Over the weekend, they've discovered water hemp uh, that is now resistant to group 15s, which, you know, in the last three to five years have become the go-to uh, herbicide for managing resistant pigweed species. Uh, so that's another potential chink in our armor that's coming forth and, and we we have to develop new tools because there's not that many left. In fact, that may have been the last really strong tool that we had to manage resistant pigweed species. So uh, looking ahead then, uh, maybe the next two, five years, what can growers expect to see from FMC? Well, I think you'll see, uh, in terms of innovation, you'll see a lot about our fungicides, and we're, we uh, are really excited about what we have to offer there. We've got a new foliar and fungicide, Lucento, this year will be registered for corn, soybeans, wheat, peanuts, sugar beets, uh, and then we'll follow that up with a, a, a SDHI fungicide. We'll pair with our flutriphol mo molecule uh, to make two different products. One will be a, a TFV uh, product specifically for almonds and grapes and, and then another row crop material to be really targeted toward the corn market uh, in those later season uh, applications. We're also doing some unique things with our fungicides, uh, particularly around our Thrive 3D technology. And we, we've learned some things about um, our fungicide molecule flutriphol uh, that we think is very interesting and has the potential to uh, really make a, a major shift in the way that fungicides are used today. Um, we've seen that already and put that into practice in uh, TFV crops. Now we're learning we can do that same thing in row crops as well. And uh, we're really excited about that. Look for more information about that uh, this time next year. Uh, but I think we've got some real game-changing technology uh, go, coming forward in that in that regard. You might have mentioned it here, but I just was going to ask, what do you think is the most innovative product that you're working on right now? I, I think right now our fungicide active ingredient flutriphol is the thing that excites me most because it's, it's here close to it and we can see it. Now I'm really excited about our herbicide 
uh, new modes of action as well. Uh, you know, we're, we're again, you know, five years minimum out from seeing those hit the market. Uh, and I'm just now learning about the potential of those. But what I see uh, today is really exciting because we've, we've taken the market-based objectives and targets that our customers have told us they needed. We've employed them in the discovery process and screened all our, our chemical library against those targets. And now we're starting to see some of the results of that come out and into development. And what little I've been able to see so far in the field looks like we're hitting on the major target species uh, and, and we're going to be able to provide growers something that's going to truly help them uh, get back on top of some of the resistant species that we have had trouble with. We're managing through those situations but some of our options continue to slip away in uh, maintaining uh, uh, a high uh, or, or a acceptable level of management is becoming more and more and more difficult. How would you describe the uh, FMC innovation and R&D process? Uh, well, we... Or as, approach to yeah, it. Yeah, as, as I mentioned, we, we, we start with market-based target objectives, right? So we talk with our customers. What do you need? What's missing from your arsenal? What are you struggling to manage we funnel those from the commercial organization up through our R&D organization to set a, a, a list of targets that we need to hit across all disciplines. We've got plant pathology, uh, entomology, uh, weed science uh, uh, discovery teams, and they'll take a library that's a little less than two million compounds right now and screen about 4,000 of those every month. Uh, against those market-based targets. Uh, if they come up with the slightest little hit, then we put those into the discovery process and, and start looking at, all right, how can we tweak that molecule to make it a little more active or make it a little safer to the crop? Can we look at different derivatives of that compound? Um, and there's many, many hurdles that that chemistry has to pass over. And out of those, uh, 400,000 that we screen every year, we might get two to three hits. And those move into discovery phase one, or, or discovery A, discovery B, discovery C, and, and the, the hurdles get a little hard, higher to jump over in each of those steps. When they finally pass that last hurdle in the discovery process, then they move to development. That, may, that discovery process I just described might take two to three years. Um, and then they move into development process, and, and then they still have some hurdles to jump over in terms of, you know, is it a, a uh, uh, you know, field efficacy, what we thought it would be coming out of the lab? Is it safe to the crop? Is it, uh, does it pass the toxicological hur hurdles, uh, environmental fate hurdles, and things of that nature? So there's about five to seven year process there in development uh, where we're doing all that, we're refining rates, uh, maybe adding additional crops to the original concept if if that's uh, uh, something that we can do based on on our research um, and then it finally passes uh, the final hurdle hurdle through registration somewhere in five to seven years later and so now before we close is there are there any other examples of FMC innovation that you would want to share or just closing thoughts about the whole uh, innovation R&D uh, way that FMC does it? Well, I, I think, I guess a, a, a closing thought is that, you know, FMC is committed to crop protection. Um, there's a lot of folks in our space that have some of the same market-based objectives, uh, but, but most of our competitors now are in the seed business or in, in the crop protection business. And with that comes some competition for resources uh, both time and, and financial resources to develop concepts on both sides. We're completely focused on crop protection uh, and that allows us to, you know, maintain uh, uh, without competition for those resources and maintain that focus on, on some key targets that we think we can help our customers with long term. Uh, we're not trying to be all things to all people. 
but we've got some specific targets we're working on uh, in the crop production realm that I think gives us a competitive advantage. Um, the other thing I would say is that through our integration, um, it's been real heartening to me to see the way our or or two organizations have come together and met our R&D targets in terms of products that advance from discovery to development. Um, in, in one year, we managed to do three of those products that move from discovery to development. That's actually our goal is to do that every year with three products. So in that first year when you had two organizations coming together, I was impressed by the way our R&D organization just kept that engine rolling and moving and, and advancing with really not a lot of distraction uh, or, or uh, organizational obstacles uh, to, to getting the job done. And so I, I think that was um, unusual and I'm quite proud of our organization for doing that. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. That's David Wheeler with FMC. We've been visiting here at the National Farm Machinery Show. I'm Chuck Zimmerman reporting.